In this video, I'm going to be telling you the tragic story of Nathan the Nobody. If you enjoy long stories like this, be sure to let me know by supporting the video by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. It really helps out and enables me to keep making content for you guys. But with that being said, I hope you enjoy the story. Nathan the Nobody Origin In the past, Nathan had a normal childhood. He grew up in a great family with his maternal twin sister, Crystal. Unlike his sister, he had a very unique feature, a rare genetic condition called heterochromia iridum, meaning he has one blue eye and one green one. Nathan and his sister were mostly raised by their mother, who cared for them almost equally. Nathan's father, however, tried his best. He was about six years old when he noticed his father didn't give him the same amount of affection that he did his sister. He was a smart kid. He had an easy time at school. While his sister was a lot better at making new friends, how could she not be? He saw her as the nicest person in his life. Often, Nathan was quick to anger. He didn't quite know why that was. He just got angry a lot, and easily too. That temper would get him in many fist fights and arguments with his fellow peers and teachers. His actions would lead to many arguments between his parents. They were as quiet as could be about it, trying to avoid fighting in front of him and his sister. But his father would lose it sometimes. His face would go red with anger at the news of another outburst of Nathan's. This would begin his father's own rage, yelling at Nathan before his mother would step in and drag his father away to cool off. This somehow, in some odd way, made Nathan happy to see. To see his parent giving him the attention over his sister. To see how easily it was to manipulate them into certain emotions. It was thrilling to him, even if it was only for a little bit. One night, he awoke to whispering words. He frowned, getting out of his bed. He made his way to the bedroom door. He could hear more hushed words. He made his way out into the hallway as silently as he could. The hushed words not making sense as his parents go back and forth. You're always too sympathetic with him. You let him off too easy, his father quietly screeches, trying to keep from waking him and his sister. He's just a kid, he'll learn better, his mother replies softly in a pleading voice. You always say that, however, he does know better. He's a smart kid, he just doesn't want to behave. You're being too harsh. No, I'm not. He cannot keep doing this. Why can't he be like his sister? She's sweet, she's calm, and she doesn't rebel like this. A normal frickin' child. He'll grow. He had heard enough and snuck back to his room. His thoughts and feelings turned slightly bitter and resentful towards his sister. The next few mornings, he refused to talk or play with her. It wasn't until she kept pestering him about why that he yelled at her. After he stopped yelling, his sister just stood there. His bitter feelings quickly turned to guilt. He could feel his sister's sorrow as if it was his own. He decided to turn his bitter feelings to his father, the one that planted the seeds in the first place. 
Still, because of all of this, he still bared some envy towards his sister. However, Nathan loved and trusted his sister completely, partly because he believed she was incapable of doing any wrong. As their father seemed to imply, she was the good one, and he was the odd twin. He and his sister understood each other on a level that not all siblings get to. Of course, they had their difficulties, as most siblings do. By the age of nine, Nathan had distanced himself from his parents. They claimed they cared about him just as equally as his sister. It was clear that that wasn't the case. His grades may have been great, but he continued to fight amongst his peers. He never bothered his sister at school. The last thing he wanted was to bug her or have the bullies focus on her. So, instead, he just sat away from everyone at recess and used school as a distraction from social activities. One night, his parents went out, and the two of them were left with a babysitter. The sitter was annoying to him. All she did was talk on her phone, so he retired to his room to play. After much time passed, he got an unsettling feeling. Agitated, he left his room. He could hear faint sounds from the living room. This sound was followed by yelling. When he turned the corner, his sister was in a corner crying, the babysitter above her yelling. Her hand was raised to hit Crystal. Nathan's memory after that moment was blacked out. According to his sister, he came running in and tackled down the sitter. The sitter caught off guard, tried to grab anything, and ended up falling back into the TV stand. It knocked the TV off the stand and onto his sister. Luckily, she only had a few cuts and a broken arm. Upon investigation of the whole incident, followed by some therapy analysis, they found that he had an issue with anger, and that blacking out was just a side effect of this. From this, he became more recluse, and refused to participate in activities that were too stressful, or even just interact. When they got older, his father left with another woman, leaving just them and his mother. His sister became better known due to her outgoing personality, while he was known as the odd twin. He didn't care though, as long as his sister was happy, and he didn't have another episode. On that day, Nathan got ready as per usual. He grabbed some grey pants, black shirt, and his favourite black jacket that his mum swore he always wore. He went downstairs and greeted his sister with a smile. She was wearing her favourite navy jeans and t-shirt Nathan bought for her as a birthday gift last year. Nathan glanced down at the long necklace hidden in his clothes. It's a bit feminine, but he knew Crystal tried her hardest to get him something special for their birthday. He cherished it, almost as much as he cared for her. Morning, Nate. I'm staying late at drama today. Big rehearsal, she explains, giving a warm smile. Nathan nods and pats his sister on her head. Okay, I'll most likely be hanging out with Jeremy anyway. I'll just pick you up today. How long will it be? He asks, 
while putting on some combat boots. About four o'clock or so, she replies. Okay, cool. Oh, I almost forgot. My friend Belle has a huge crush on you. She's so shy about it. It's too funny, she laughs, giving Nathan a poke as they head out the door. She the one with the red hair, right? Nathan asks with a nonchalant tone. Ooh, you like her too, huh? Huh? Maybe now you can forget Sarah, she teased, giving him a slight shove. He only replied with a roll of the eyes. They walk to school together, taking the same path the two of them took all the time, talking about random little things. There was an abnormal chill in the air. Something felt off to Nathan, but he just shrugged it away. They arrive at school. Nathan gets some of the normal looks he has come to expect from people nowadays, especially in comparison to his cheerful bright sister. They look to be from completely different worlds. Oh, did I tell you Dave asked me out? She chimes in with excitement, breaking his thoughts. Hmm? Oh, no, I don't think you did. That's cool. He's the one on the basketball team or something, right? Nathan asks, raising a brow. No, he's the one that's on the swim team, she replies, jumping a bit. Oh, he replies indifferently, stuffing his hands into his jacket. You don't mind if I date him? She asks, trying to read his face. He laughs at the odd question. You know I don't care about that kind of stuff. As long as you don't get in trouble again, he laughs, giving her a small shove. The day proceeds like most school days. His sister busy with friends and club activities. Nathan, on the other hand, tends to spend most of his time listening to music or tucked away in the library with his friend. He prefers to go somewhere that was quiet rather than loud. After school, Nathan went on his way to meet his friend, but is blocked by a couple of guys. Nathan ignores them, knowing they only want to try to insult him. As Nathan walked away, he feels a hard soda can hit him in the back. He stops and silently stood there, hearing the attempted insults through his headphones. He bends down and picks up the full can. He stands there for a moment, contemplating possible scenarios that could happen. He sees out of the corner of his eye one of the guys coming towards him. Nathan calmly moves out of the way, letting the person trip over his own feet to the ground. He gives an amused grin, seeing the guy pissed off. He holds the can over him, dropping it on the guy's face, letting gravity do all the work. As the guy freaks out over the pain, his buddy wasn't sure whether to attack or back away. Nice try. Tell your sister I said hi, Nathan says with an amused grin. Moving on. The bully's friend just standing there with a stupid look on his face, not sure what to do. Nathan moves on, heading towards him and his friend's meeting place. He frowns, noting the unsettling feeling once more. That one that eats away at you, warning you to stay on your toes. A scowl forms on his face as Nathan gets lost in deep thought. Hey, what took you so long? His friend Jeremy calls out upon his arrival. Nathan shrugs in reply, taking a seat on one of the benches. I can't stay too long, 
I need to meet my sister at four, Nathan says, wrapping up his headphones. <sighs> of course you do. Why do you anyway? She's already the centre of attention and doesn't seem to need you around, Jeremy asks, annoyance written on his face. She may be aggravating at times, but she's my sister, and the only one in my family who gets me. Nathan scowls more, losing himself in thought once again. His friend shrugs off the response, the area going silent. At about 3.45pm, Nathan walks back to the school and waits outside the drama club room for his sister. Not long after, the club is dismissed, and everyone starts making their way home. Nathan greets his sister as she runs up to him. Not quite four o'clock. Glad I showed up early. Would be a shame if I came back here only to miss you, he chuckles. How was drama today? He asks as they began to make their way out of the school. It was great. What did you do? She asks, poking his arm. Oh, just some social experiments. And hung out for a while, he says, then chuckles to himself. She raises an eyebrow, but shrugs it off with a smile. You know, you don't need to walk me home, she says the mood getting a bit bitter. She looks away from him, clearly getting depressed. They slow down to a stop, everything going silent for a long moment. He sighs, breaking the silence. I know. Mum is still worried though, and I am too. You're still recovering after all. Last thing we want is for you to, well, you know, he mutters, looking at her. I know, I just feel like I'm sucking away your time, she sighs. As they made their way home, along the same familiar road on the empty neighbourhood block, Nathan notices a vehicle behind them. He didn't give it much thought, though but he still urged his sister to walk faster. That unsettling feeling is back once more. That same feeling that's been looming over him all day long. He could feel his heart start to race, like something was eating at him. Nathan just chuckles and pats her head. You're crazy. I have too much free time, and you know it. Come on, let's go, he smiles, moving forward again. The sun, while still high in the sky, is slowly losing its shine over the land. He looks around the quiet neighbourhood, and hardly anyone is home around this time. Most are working, some have kids with after-school activities, so the walk home for them is always quiet at this time. He glances slightly to see the car in his peripheral, its red colour slightly blinding him. They were nearly home. Nathan can hear the vehicle slowly approaching them. He gently grabs his sister's arm, pulling her closer. Nathan, are you okay? Are you having an episode? She asks, looking at her brother with concern in her eyes, trying to read his mind. Just to pick up the pace. Let's get home, okay? He whispers. They're only a few houses away. The car slowly pulls up, closer and closer. The sound of the tyres getting louder. It then just passes them. Nathan sighs and scolds himself for acting paranoid. He slows down, letting go of his sister's arm. Are you okay? She asks again, stopping in her tracks. 
Yeah, I'm fine. Let's go, he says sternly. No, you're not. Tell me what has you all wound up, she says, not moving from her spot. It's nothing. I was just getting paranoid, he frowns, feeling like a child. See, that's all you needed to say. I thought you were having one of your blackout moments again. I... Crystal stops, looking behind Nathan with a puzzled expression. What's wrong? Nathan asks. But as he turns, three men jump out of a van that slowed down and had pulled up behind Nathan. Nathan pushes his sister behind him, glaring down at the men. Nathan could feel his sister shake behind him as she held on to the back of his jacket. In a moment's notice, they attack. Nathan struggles to keep them away. He manages to get a few blows in before being overpowered. Both he and his sister are dragged into the van quickly. He struggles to break free from them, the overwhelming urge to protect his sister fueling him. However, Nathan is held down to the van's floor with a few punches to his face, attempting to knock him out. The van drives off. Give me, hurry, one of them barks, the words drifting in and out of his mind as Nathan angrily wraps his hands around one of their necks. He growls, feeling something stab into him. He feels himself get weak, his sister's screams lingering in his mind as he falls into darkness. He wakes up in a dark, cold room. The room isn't too big. It looks like a rundown basement almost. There are broken pipes along the wall. The smell of rust, dirt and mould fills the room. Nathan slowly makes his way into a sitting position, his head still pounding with every movement. He winces, noticing a door on the other side of the room. Unlike the room, it looks new and made of metal. He tries to collect his thoughts and recall what happened but the sound of voices take him away from his thoughts. How much do you think we can get for these two? One man says. I don't know, but their family looks like they can afford it though, said another. If not, at least we can sell them on the black market or something. Maybe just the girl. That is, if the other guys don't mess her up too badly. The boy... We can just kill him or something. The man somewhat laughs. Nathan barely can hear them. Yeah, true. Or sell him too. Men sell more if you find the right buyer. Usually some manual labour factory or drug cartels. The other man replies. Nathan's mind collects itself with the realisation of who the girl they spoke of is. He struggles to stand up with a stammer, his breathing becoming raspy and shallow. He heard them begin to get closer to the door. Quickly, he searches for something to use as a weapon, but finds nothing. Instead, he waits in a corner closest to the opening. Then as the door opens, he lunges at the first man who comes in. Where's my sister? He yells, holding the man's throat tightly to the hard, cold ground. His pulse beating against his hands, feeling himself losing to his anger. Smack! He barely feels something hit him over his head, knocking him off the man. Adrenaline numbing the blow. The guy hits him again, a swift blow landing to his stomach after that. Nathan doubles over, holding his stomach. Ah, damn prick! Let him rot in here! 
He hears one of the men say bitterly, a hint of pain lingering in his voice. They slam the door shut, and with a click, it locks. Footsteps slowly becoming inaudible, the only noise left being the drips of the pipes. Nathan lies there in pain, the rush of adrenaline dying off, leaving his head and stomach screaming in pain. He tries to move, but is paralysed by the mixture of physical misery and emotional turmoil. After a moment of rest, he slowly gets up, lurching here and there. He shakes what pain remains to the back of his mind and stares down the door intensely. His skin crawls with anger, knowing his sister is being hurt while he's locked away in the dark. He moves to the metal door and slams his fists fiercely. I must, I will get out, he yells, kicking the door. He continues to hit and kick the door repeatedly, over and over, trying to break it down. After many possible hours, he couldn't keep it up any longer, sliding down to the floor in exhaustion. His body aches in pain, more so his head. He reaches up and wipes off his forehead. When he brings down his hand, something catches his eye. In the darkness, it's hard to tell, but there's no doubt that it's blood. It must have been from the blow earlier, but he didn't care. His sister is in pain, and he can't protect her from it. Nathan attempts to rest, but the aching idea of his sister being hurt by those men is enough to keep him from doing so. The sounds of the pipes dripping seem to echo, and to become louder with every drop. He tries to block it out, only to hear a scream. This sparks his energy. He holds his breath, trying to listen for anything. Drip, drip, drip. Nothing, nothing at all. Was it just a figment of his imagination? A hallucination. He presses his ear to the door. Still, the only sound is the dripping from the pipe. He gets up and begins to pace, his breathing becoming harsh and shallow once more. He lets out another scream, slamming at the door again, his fist starting to throb in pain, the skin on his knuckles starting to rub away. Anger blinds him, pacing again like a crazed animal stuck in a cage. Drip, drip, drip. Nathan wakes up, feeling groggy, his body aching, still exhausted from sleeping on the concrete floor. He winces when getting up his hands swollen and scabby from the missing skin. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, sis. But don't worry. I'll get out and beat those people, Nathan whispers to himself, a smile forming on his face, imagining them in torturous agony. Drip. 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 He grips his throat, looking around the barely lit room for something, anything at this point. A pipe is leaking somewhere. He follows the sound to a far corner, a dirty, rusty pipe, the source of the sound. With some hesitation, he stares at the pipe, changing his mind for a moment, 
His throat, however, made the final decision. He takes a sip of the small water dripping out. It tastes awful. He spits the taste away, refusing any more. Last thing I need. I have to get out, Nathan murmurs to himself, turning back to the metal door, trying to think of any way to get it open. Drip, drip, drip. His breathing grew heavy, getting frustrated again. Finally, he makes a move and slams his body into the door. Not even a dent. He attempts again. When that doesn't work, he hits it with frustration. His hand, however, didn't agree with that idea. They're too swollen to keep hitting it. He slams himself once again against the door, and then kicks it. When he couldn't bring down the door that way, he begins pacing once again. This continues for what seems like an eternity. His knuckles now just scraped off flesh and bones from pounding at the door. Nathan huffs and glares at the unmoving door. He couldn't stay still any longer. The door stood there, taunting him, the only thing keeping him from his freedom. The door spinning around in his vision, his body weak from the lack of essential needs. Drip, drip, drip. I'm... I'm going to kill them all. Kill them. Make them suffer. Nathan yells, throwing a loose piece of concrete at the door. The echo of the metal ringing through the room. The sounds of dripping water sending chills up his spine. Every second, the two taunting him, laughing at his misery. The sounds of his sister's screams filling his mind. But suddenly, after some time, they went silent. Nothing left but a rhythmic drip. More days seem to pass him by, and he slowly slips into the same cycle. Hunger getting the best of him. He's exhausted, but he didn't stop. In fact, he couldn't stop. He hits his head on the wall. I'll kill them, Nathan whispers to himself, and repeating it over and over. He finally caved in and drank more of the water, the taste now dwindling to nothing. The dripping stops. He paces back and forth, over and over again. He could swear he could hear screaming. Her screaming for him. He could hear her voice speaking to him. He began to see the door opening up. But no, only a hallucination. Nathan breathes heavily like some rabid animal. The door screaming at him now. Finally, with a twitch, he yells out. He grabs onto one of the heavy rusty pipes and pulls at it. It didn't budge at first, until finally, with a snap, it pulls away at one of the rusty hinges. He stands silently at the door, Swaying back and forth. Slowly, he raises the heavy pipe. And with all his strength, he brings it down on the door. The door makes a twisted metallic sound, as if it was screaming in agony. He grins, pulling the pipe back up. A small dent has been made. He laughs dryly, 
pleased by this. He brings the pipe down over and over again. With every hit, a hope to free him and his sister. The door growls louder and louder with every hit. The metallic sound like screams of defeat. Every swing growing heavier. And with that, Nathan only laughs harder. He stops to look over the dents on the door. Nathan grins at the progress of the door. Still standing there, shaking. It's time to die, Nathan whispers, each word sliding off his tongue. Nathan raises the metal pipe high up again. Creak. He stands there, and looking at the dark metallic door that holds him there. The last hit, making the door move away from the door frame. He brings the pipe down with great speed. Finally, the door breaks loose from its hinges. He manages to push through the heavy door, and the sounds of the door squeaking painfully loud as he steps through. Nathan walks through the dark basement, easily finding the door through the darkness that his eyes have come accustomed to. Feelings of hope flooded him. Finally, the relief knowing he can save his sister pulses through him rapidly. He could go to her. He could save her. He hears voices above him on the other floor speaking. Are you still on that? Sorry, but I had to kill her. She went crazy, bit off some portman's hand. A man speaks, no remorse in his tone. Yeah, true. I was getting tired of seeing her face anyway. All bloody and shit. It was gross. Ah, speaking of which, do you think that one punk is dead by now? Speaks another, no empathy in their tone. Nathan begins to shake, hot tears forming in his eyes. A cold, numb feeling growing in his chest. This couldn't be happening. It's a lie. No, 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 no! He refuses to believe it. The hope in his body weighing heavily down on him. As if a two-ton boulder has been placed on his chest. Slowly cutting off his air supply. He stumbles through the room, moving back and forth. Yeah, it's been like over a week. Dad is still breathing. The other man laughs. Nathan hears them make their way to the basement stairs and slowly start to walk down the stairway, still talking away. Their voices are numbing buzz. His grief quickly turns into an unquenchable rage, the wrath showing so very clearly on his face. His body pulsing with a superabundance of emotions, boiling out of control. His mind feeling like it's being split violently open. Everything then goes silent. Nathan. Kill them. He hears a voice whisper so clearly. The silence following these bitter words. It's too quiet. He looks to the doorway. Drip, drip, drip. He mumbles, barely audible. Nathan grips the pipe in his hand. A twisted grin forming on his face. The men open the basement door, not suspecting a thing, too busy talking to each other. Nathan swings down at the first man, a loud, sickening crunch following the blow. The man falls down instantly, his head way easier to break than a metal door. The other man stands there in terror and shook as Nathan's smile greets him. The pipe drips from the first man's blood, 
that has fallen over dead. I was told to kill you too, he says, and then laughs, swinging the pipe down at the horrified man. Thud, thud, thud. Nathan continues to hit the man, making sure he suffers greatly with every blow. The man screams out in pain, until slowly he stops moving. There's no more noise, only the sound of dripping blood. He didn't move anymore, but Nathan continues to land blow after blow, swinging blindly. His heavy breathing steadies as he comes to a stop, enjoying the sound of the dripping blood. He then made his way up the stairs, quietly avoiding to make any more noise. He finds the other two men on the upper floors, one too busy with what he was doing, the other rustling through something. Neither hears a thing. Nathan steps to the man, rustling through a drawer. The man turns, a gun clearly in hand. But he's too late. His face turns to horror, seeing the blood-soaked young man standing behind him, before the blur of something lands to his temple. He falls to the ground, unmoving. The last man, upon hearing the noises, waits in his room for Nathan, and after a struggle, he goes down as well. Nathan finally makes his way to his sister, a smile on his face. He opens a door. Delight filled his mind, so happy to see her again. Sorry it took so long, but I'm here now. Nathan speaks softly. He makes his way over to his sister's lifeless body. Don't cry. We're safe, and I will keep you safe. After all, there are no more of them out there right now. He frowns, looking to the doorway. No, no. Shh. Please don't cry anymore. I will protect you, sis. I promised after all, remember? <laughs> I will kill them all for what they put us through. I will save you still. He pats her head, her blood covering his hand. He didn't seem to notice her disfigurement, or even blood. He completely blocks it all out as she laid there, rotting from death. Ignored the fact that her skull is bashed in. Let's go, Nate. There's more. He hears her whisper softly to him. He grins, so happy to be with his sister again. Yes, let's go, he whispers, making his way down the stairs, soon leaving the house. I need to save you by killing them. That's how it works. I'll kill them, sis, he says with a grin, holding the bloody pipe tightly in one hand. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a fun drawing to do. Definitely one of my more gory drawings I've done in a while. If you enjoy this type of thing, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Friday. If there's any creepy pastas you'd like me to cover in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll get to it in an upcoming video. I'll catch you guys next week. Bye.